This is a HeadGum Podcast. Oh boy, Lamar, Lamar, Lamar. You mute it. You mute it. We had a bit of a technical difficulty, but now yeah. that difficulty has become quite easy. Yeah. Uh, that's what we do. We take our challenges and we eat them for breakfast. What y'all eat, eat our for challenges for breakfast. Y'all, y'all eat French toast? <laughs> uh, I'm not a. Yeah, everybody put in a chat, put in the comments what your favorite breakfast food is. I'm going to be real with you. I'm a waffle dude. Oh, really? What about yeah, pancakes? I'm a waffle guy. Pancakes are cool too. But yeah. I'm more waffles. I'm more waffles than anything. I like waffles. Waffle, like I just when, don't feel like I know where to get them. Good. You know what's. So here's the deal. I, I do believe in in ego waffles. I believe oh, in ego yeah. waffles. Yeah, I I stand by them. I stand I stand back and I stand by with ego waffles. Uh, <laughs> stand back and stand by, proud stand boys. By. I need y'all to stand back and stand by. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a waffle proud boy. Uh, but also remember when we went to we went to uh, Fresno to do some shows. You remember that? Yeah. And in that Fresno. That hotel that we stayed at mm-hmm. had the best. That industrial waffle maker at hotels. If you if you get it right, yeah. if you hit if you hit that motherfucker right, like the waffle comes out fluffy in the middle, crispy uh-huh. on the outside. Yeah, and it is a is a joy to be around. Honestly, it's a, it's, it's a, <laughs> let me tell you that Shout it is a joy to be homies. around. <laughs> yeah, Shout out to the Fresno. Like- what hotel did we stay at? We stayed at like some like kind of a bullshit hotel. We stayed yeah, at like it was a, like Fresno a Motel Suites. Six. Yeah, it was or like Red Roof Inn. I think it was Red Roof. Was it Red Roof? Like we it. stayed yeah. at we stayed at some. Oh shit! He disappeared into his motif. Uh, <laughs> we yeah we we stayed at a bullshit hotel, but it was it was it was not that waffle for that continental breakfast. Yeah, was crazy. Also, can we talk about hotel breakfast times for a second? We offer yeah, a complimentary. Yeah, we offer a complimentary breakfast. Now? It's from it's from two a.m. to five a.m. It's like, man, ain't nobody eating that shit at that point. Yeah, that's it's like <laughs> the more uh, the older I get, it's like that's so clearly a hustle. It's just like if we do it early, then it's we can, we don't have to get enough to feed the entire hotel. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like, you, actually, just, you actually do not serve breakfast for anybody. <laughs> literally, six to like six to nine is crazy. Yeah, like maybe business people are up that early, but even if I'm up that early, I don't want to eat. Like. So I was yeah. I was with my dad this week and and we go fishing a lot and mm-hmm. um we wake up at like five forty five to be out the door by six to go fishing yeah and he's like get you some food because mm-hmm. we're gonna be out there for a couple hours like dad I promise you I'm not hungry enough to <laughs> yeah like your stomach I'm, don't even be ready that early it's like I'm it still not that be in my last night but exactly I was gonna ask why do why do you have to get up early to go fishing. The water is better. The the tide tide's coming in. Mm -hmm. Uh, The tide is high, but I'm holding on. That's why we get up Uh, early because the tide is high and the fish are like just waking up. (laughs) The fish are hungry. The fish are also they're hungry. They're not. The fish are hungry for their for their continental breakfast of shrimp that we put on the edge. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, I wonder if there's like a notice in the ocean that's like we gonna have breakfast for y'all. From eight at five a.m. to to eight for the fish, yeah. but it's, a, it's just y'all trying to kill them. But so uh, y'all be throwing them back though. I seen that on the gram. Uh, that depends. Like you throw them back or you eat them? Y'all eating them? We eat we eat the fish that we catch a lot of the time. If they too small, we throw them back. We have to throw them back by law. Uh, oh, if they're if they're under a certain length, and if uh, they're not gonna, get, but like if they if if we catch big fish, like we eat them. Oh, tight. Yeah, yeah, you cook them shits right, and then yeah, uh, grandma, did you end up? Sorry, go ahead. We clean, we clean them, and my grandma fries them up. Did you end up cooking steak for them? I did. Yeah. Uh, and that was a that was a a a real. So, <laughs> uh, my <laughs> uncle, like, what's funny about that is because I talk, I tell that story. I hope my uncle, like, now my uncle's listening to to the pods, like, because he's uh-huh. just trying to support me. I hope he don't get offended. But yeah. everybody, I was like, y'all, I gotta, I gotta hurry up and go because. Like, my family's outside. I, I'm marinating the steaks right now. Like, I, I had had them salted, like, mm-hmm. let them at, sit at room temp so I could yeah. cook them and so they'd be tender. A uh, little tip for the people who eat steak and who are looking the perfect way to make a steak. You want it to set out at room temp for about an hour before you put it in your skillet or on the grill or whatever. 
And if you salt it, it brings out the moisture and then also re-puts the moisture in there. Yeah. So it's real juicy. So I had them sitting out and I had to go record foosballs. Another, uh-huh. uh, uh, this is another head gum podcast. Yeah. And, uh, if I you like football, you, come over to Foosballs. You did do it because I saw you were in the video. Or was that maybe a diff- that was with uh, Ben Rogers was there. But maybe yeah, Ben Rogers there, but I was I was on Zoom. Uh, um, I had to I had to hit the Mazda because I was Zoom zooming, just like right now. <laughs> but uh, so basically, I'm like my dad. Like everybody's like not trusting me. Yeah. They see me like your family sees you as the baby. It don't yeah. matter how old you get. It don't matter how yeah successful like, you get. It don't matter. Bring a baby cooking in the kitchen right now. Like, it's yeah. like, why is this baby in the kitchen? <laughs> yeah, and they're like, "There's no way he can do this." And I go, yeah. "I promise you, like I'm very good at cooking. I'm very good at it. It is a thing that I do very well, especially when it comes to grilling and shit like that." Yeah. And so they saw me doing it. They they had to be mm-hmm. like, "Don't." I, I loaded some old wait, while he was in the house. My dad's like, I loaded some old uh, charcoals in there while he was in the house. Thanks, Dad. Mm-hmm. Don't put them steaks on there now because they ain't ready yet. I go, I know, Dad. I'm not going to put yeah. them on there now. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. You got to let them turn white first. I understand that, Dad. <laughs> I know how to do it. You've been teaching me this all my life, and now you don't trust me to do it. Yeah. And so. Can't let go. Yeah, can't, can't let go. go. So then. Mm-hmm. And my uncle, my my older uncle, who's real particular about his food and stuff, he also likes steak very well done, and he puts ketchup on it, uh, which is blasphemous. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah, he I was know. like, <laughs> he really was trying to make me feel bad, and was like, "Don't touch mm-hmm. mine. You see that one that green and that uh, and that black tray out there? Don't uh-huh. even put your hands on it until you're <laughs> done with all it." Like, and I'm like, "All right, well, if you want to cook your own steak," and then he saw me cooking them. Uh-huh. And I like cut off a piece from my auntie, and she went crazy over it. Yeah, and he's like, "All right, make sure you cook mine last." And I'm like, "No, no you talk, you want me to cook it?" I know. Yeah, now, now you want to be part of the party. Now you want exactly. to party. Nah, nah, it's too late, bro. My, cook your all the women steak. in my family, my aunties, they loved it. They were like, mm-hmm. "This is good. This is good." My uncle, who's my nice uncle, he was like, "This is real good. You did a great job, of course." And then my dad is like, "See, here's the thing, baby." I like mine a little bit more pink than this. I go, Dad, you told me you didn't want to eat no raw meat. So I cooked it well. I cooked it medium well for you. And he right. goes, well, I like it a little bit more. He's like, but it ain't tough. It's still tender. It ain't tough. So that was a chore of cooking for the family. Right. And But my grandma liked it. My aunties liked it. And my uncle, my dad and my other uncles liked it as well. Right. Uh, we, we, we had a good time. But... That was a good night of being with the fam. Everybody came down to see me. Right. That was fun. And uh, today I drove over to New Orleans where uh, all the homies are here. Right before I came in here, I got drinks with our good brothers and sisters in Christ. Hillary Matthews, Ali Gandor, Colin McGurk. Everybody. Uh, it's like David a whole gang Connie out there. His girlfriend Meg and then uh, Drew is here. So uh, once we get done with this, we're going to hit the streets. That's right. Now, That's right. what we need to talk about now is that now keep in mind the fact that I have been in Mississippi this whole week and I've just come over to New Orleans today. That means that I have not spotted a damn person. Unless you want to hear <laughs> about my my dad's neighbors uh who Oh yeah. who none of them want to none of them watch the show, but they all want to take pictures with me in case I do something one day. So you were the most uh, famous person down there. Did I was you, most famous uh, person. Did you, uh, anyone spot you out there? Did you get spotted by anybody? Like you know what? I didn't. Store? I uh-huh. didn't. Nobody knew who I was. Nobody knew who I was. And that's fine. Yeah. I'll, I'll accept it, you know. I'm not, I'm, I'm still, I'm still uh, gaining my, uh, yeah, my we're notoriety. Gonna yeah. We're going to come up. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I did not I get spotted. spotted. At all. Cause I'm out, I'm still in me. LA and I got this spotted. This one excited me. I'm not sure if you'll be excited by this because you didn't watch the show. But I was at that place we go to all the time where we be drinking. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say what it's called, but a cool place. And Cassandra walks over and she's like, she's like spotted, and I'm like, but then walks away because she had a customer, right? So then mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, what? What was that? Like, who did she spot, right? And I'm just like looking at, so I'm just looking around the bar, kind of figuring out who's he looking at, like who's in here. And then I see, I should probably look up his name, um, but I know his character name from Game of Thrones. 
the OG, one of the heroes of Game of Thrones, Samwell Tarly, was in the bar kicking it. Kicking Samwell it. Tarly. John Bradley was at the bar. I'm about to put, spill some tea, so don't get mad at me, John Bradley, if you're listening. But I don't care, because this is the Gossip Kings, and I got to say what I saw. You know what I'm saying? So he's sitting there. He on a little date with a little female, a little cutie pie, a little tall glass of water, if you will. And they was getting it in, getting it in, like freakiness. I was like, <laughs> uh, no, nah, I'm just joking. But it was so tight for me because in the show, he plays kind of like a loser, like he literally plays a virgin in the show, like he never had sex or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, so in real life, I was seeing him, he had a baddie with him, Game of Thrones is the shit that's the way it goes so that's the spot that i got you know what i'm saying hell yeah hell yeah uh, shout out to shout out john bradley samuel tarley yeah samuel tarley samuel <laughs> remember sam remember samuel from the internet i said what what in the butt <laughs> yeah so what in the butt i said what what, said what, what in, the butt. in the butt <laughs> also real quick i'll give you all this user when i just came in hot off the press spotted I was in the airport in Toronto, and a girl almost walked into me because she was looking at her phone. Oh. Uh, I didn't realize who it was, but my boyfriend told me it was Maya Hawk from Stranger Things, Ethan Hawke's Titan. daughter. Did you Sick. know Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman were married? I did know that. And they, they got kids and shit. Yeah, that's, they're, they're, Maya they're, that's their Hawk. kid. Yeah. Maya Hawk. Is she the one that plays? Who she play on? Oh, okay. I've seen her before. Yeah. That's cool. I'm, yeah, so she's cool. So you're in the air, another airport spotted. If you guys, if like, y'all want to, yeah, if y'all want to get spotted, go to go on the airport. It seems like the place to be. She she looked like her mama and her daddy. She does right because I, when I looked yeah. at her, I was like, she looked like Oprah Thurman a little bit. And then I googled it, and I was like, it was like that's her mom. Crazy. She like Ethan Hawke a little bit. She like both <laughs> of them a little bit. <laughs> it's crazy how a child looks like their the person the two people that created them blows yeah. me away. <laughs> I look I look quite a bit like my father and people. Like they would see us together and they would go, "This is insane! How much y'all look like we yeah. we look we look we look uh, quite a great deal alike." Yeah, y'all look like almost like y'all could be brothers. Um, yeah. But um, so that was my spot. It. What else is going on? Yeah, and I've been chilling. Yeah, I think uh, also real quick on the. Pro- I wanted to say this earlier when we were talking about Pro Boys, but I was watching uh, Post Malone, uh, mm-hmm. Tiny De- Tiny Desk concert. Yeah. And this this dude did the funniest shit. Well, it wasn't funny, but it was funny to me. But he like, and you know how you do the little banter in between songs? <laughs> and he was like, all right, this next song is this, blah, blah, blah. I'm really having a great time here. And it was like an awkward silence. And he goes, how about them Proud Boys? <laughs> like nobody <laughs> laughed. Like like no one laughed. And then he's like, all right. <laughs> and started playing. I was, I don't know. I don't, I'm sure he was trying to be funny, but it was like, it, that shit made me laugh. <laughs> it's just like so random. I was like, what? That is but a lesson was- in knowing your audience. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I think he was just like, he was like, this would be funny. I think it also was probably right around the time they had got convicted too, when that shit came out. Or yeah. Some of those got, yeah, so probably, he's probably trying to be topical. But, you know, he can't win them all, you know? Sometimes have you they heard don't of, laugh. Mm-hmm. Have you heard about this? Have, have you heard that some states, Arizona is now adding varsity women's flag football to high schools? Yeah, I have heard about that, yeah. I think that's uh, pretty cool. I love that. I, I mean, is 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 it was is that controversial? Is that people not into it, or you think it's just like uh, isn't that well, what uh, Powder Puff was? Kinda, yeah. I, I listen. I I I think that it's going to be controversial because everything is controversial nowadays. Uh-huh. Like, but I kind of like it. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool that they're doing it. Uh, I think it expands the sport. Um, yeah. I think it's. I like football quite a bit. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like it that much, but I think it's pretty tight. I love football. I'm, I'm into it. I was thinking about uh, yesterday. I was going to ask y'all to put me on your show on foosball. You want to come guess. on foosballs? You can come on foosball. I'm, I'm being paying. You, I just I have questions, you know, but I but I um, but I have been following it, so I do know what's going on. To the but listener, like, to the to the listener right now, if y'all if y'all like football, come over and check out another fellow Headgum podcast. It's called Foosballs. I host with two of my very good friends, Ryan Meharry and Greg Gallant. And uh, we have a real good time talking about football, fantasy football, and all that good stuff. If you like football. And uh, if you like Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, we spent about two or three minutes on that last episode. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
But it's still happening. It's still it's still, happening. It's still It's still in the It's still happening. Uh, a little bit of a distraction. I, uh, but I do want to know what people's favorite breakfast food is. Something yes, we all please. can talk about. And then I will explain, man, explain to you why your choice is wrong. <laughs> waffles? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. So, wait. You didn't tell me. Are you French toast, uh, waffles, or I'm, pancakes? I'm French toast all day. I love French toast. The problem with French toast is that uh, no one makes it well because it takes a lot of time to make it good. And you, yeah. can, all, it can, you can get away with making it really fast. And I think most restaurants just do it fast and it's just not good. So I, I ain't gonna lie. I just talked. I just talked myself up cooking wise. French toast is something that I have not mastered. Every time I try to make it, it's always like yeah. too like eggy or something like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you can master yeah. it, I'll try it. You know, I'd be curious to see if you can pull it off. I, I haven't either. Like I, I bet I would have an easier time cooking pancakes than French toast. Like even though oh, pancakes I can, I can are cook pretty hard pancake. too. I can like cook in a um, pancake. And uh, I like, uh, but I, I think it's the bread. I, from what I hear, it's the bread. It's, you start with the bread. Like if you got, you got to get that Texas brioche kind of shit, the thick bread. The Texas, I like the Texas toast when they do it with the Texas toast. Yeah. Um, but, but speaking uh, of yeah. breakfast, yeah. Beatrice and Blair are having <laughs> breakfast, and they, that's right. They really buddied up out here, and we're gonna find out why Beatrice is all bl- buddied up with Blair after this break. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's Carl Tart here. And y'all know me. I talk about it all the time on the podcast, how much I like to cook. I love to cook. That's what I do. I get down in the kitchen. And now, you know, I'm on my gym journey. I'm trying to be a little bit more mindful of what I'm eating. And I'm trying not to eat out as much. And I'm trying to get these healthy recipes in. Healthy enough, you know. I'm still going to enjoy myself because you got to enjoy life. But I stumbled upon this thing, HelloFresh, okay? HelloFresh is the easiest way for you to get these meals done for yourself. It's easy. A crazy schedule can make it easy to fall back into your dinner time recipe rut. You know what I'm saying? You you eating the same things over and over again, and it, sometimes you adding too much butter or too much salt, and it's getting in that unhealthy place. Well, HelloFresh gives you over 40 recipes to choose from every week. You get to choose. It come to your door. You pick them things out, and you just eat them up. Well, you got to cook them first before you eat them up. Don't eat them cold. But... HelloFresh makes whipping up a home-cooked dinner actually doable with quick and easy options, including the 15-minute meals. That's less time than it takes to get the delivery. And with everything pre-portioned to deliver right to your door every week, it's really a no-brainer. You have to do this. So go to HelloFresh.com forward slash 50XOXO and use code 50XOXO for 50% off plus free shipping. That's 50XOXO for 50% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh.com slash 50XOXO. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Yo, it's your boy Carl Tart. Are you a millennial who misses what life was like in the 2000s? I know I do. I'm getting old. Have you had a hard time finding new or curated music? These playlists be all over the place. You, you be grooving and then something come on and that is not what you're trying to hear. Are you interested in multiple perspectives on relationships, dating, and are looking for hosts that offer a non-male bashing perspective, but also hold both sexes accountable? I'm all about that accountability. You know we about that accountability here on XOXO Gossip Kings. If you're like me in all those areas, then you are going to love. See, the thing is, podcast hosted by Grammy Award winning R&B artist Bridget Kelly and media personality and podcast trailblazer Mandy B. Twice a week, Bridget and Mandy have nostalgic conversations in their grown segments, political pop culture conversations in their honest segments, and relationship hot take conversations in their slightly toxic segment. (laughs) The opinions on the show are real and are brought to you by the genuine connections that the ladies have with the guests that they like to call their friends with benefits. Each week, you'll leave with some new music recommendations or a curated playlist that you didn't even know you needed in their freshly squeezed music segment. Most recently, the ladies have sat down with Ari Lennox, Big Frida, Remy Ma, Van Lathan, Robert Glasper, D. Ray McKesson, Chloe Bailey, Money Long, Neo. Follow and subscribe to See The Thing Is on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or on YouTube. New audio episodes drop every Tuesday and Friday, and visuals are available on YouTube on Wednesdays and Saturdays. All right, y'all, back to the show. And we're, and we're black. Black. And better than father, ever, baby. Father and the Bride. Oh, this father. One, I knew that one. That's a good movie. I knew that, I knew that reference. That was tight. Father yeah, and the Bride. That, Father and the Bride. That's what this episode is called. Because we had the priest in this. That's why. That's yes. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> that dude get on my nerves. He put that, me to sleep, bro. He yeah, put me, no, 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 no. The priest. I, I don't put me understand to sleep. his his character yet. Like I don't. I I feel like they. Well, we'll talk. We'll get into it. I have an opinion about that. Please, I, I can't wait to hear about it because I'm sick of this guy. I don't like him. <laughs> uh, Nate is searching for who, like, trying to find out who hurt him. Yeah. And Chuck is like, man, I ain't got no time to be thinking about who cut your brake line. Blair is not talking to me. Right. So yeah, you need like, to fuck uh, that. Yeah. I don't care about that. Go to Gossip Girl. Work with her. Find out. Like he he trying to be like, look, bro. Like this is what it is. This is what you got to deal with. Like you just got to. It seems weird that like there's such a. I mean, I know they hate Gossip Girl, but it's like it's not that crazy for Nate to work with Gossip Girl. Like it's not like it's she's not. fucking. They acting like she got canceled or some shit. Like she was out exactly. here fucking like doing some weirdo shit. But like, well, she kind of did because apparently if the paparazzi she, didn't know. She oh, she broke right. to the paparazzi where Blair and Chuck were going to be, and they chased them off the road. So technically, she did do. That's true. You know. But then we find out that it wasn't her fault. It was somebody who cut the brake line. Because she wouldn't have it's known. It's not your fault. <laughs> For some reason, I thought the song you're about to sing was going to be like, they cut the brake line. <laughs> 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 you took the, it's not your fault instead. But uh, it's, I mean, because I, I feel like Gossip Girl had no, there's no way she could have known that they were. Pops are actually gonna run her them all off the road. <laughs> no, that's crazy. crazy. You know, she there was no way she was gonna know that. She was just she was just doing her job that she has put on herself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, you're right. but but yeah, it's a big it's a big tormenting thing for Nate. But he's 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 making it happen. He's gonna find out. He does want to find out what happened to him. He does want to find out. And he will find out eventually. Here's what's crazy, and that was a crazy drop for me too when he found out. We're gonna get to that. But Blair and Beatrice yeah. is together. They eating breakfast. And, you know, they just playing with their food because it's the same Rufus Waffles that they use every time. And Blair decides <laughs> to let Beatrice be a bridesmaid. And I'm like, yeah. oh, she could have fucked something up. Yeah. Blair trusts this girl for some reason, and I don't know why. She trusted her the whole episode. And eventually it worked out for her. We, we know this is a little bit of a spoiler, but, like, uh, yeah. y'all have already seen this show. I'm the, I'm the one that hasn't seen it. But it is, like, I don't like Beatrice. And I didn't yeah. like her then, and but I, we figured out what her disposition is, and yeah. it is. I I get it now, and now she trusts Blair, and Blair trusts her, so that's yeah. kind of cool. I, it's like there, it, I think Blair. It seems like Blair just like wants things to work out. She just wants. I just want this shit to just be smooth. I'm about to get married. I yeah. can't be having this man's family hating me and shit. I feel yeah. her, but yeah, it, it, she did kind of throw the trust in a little too soon. But also, yeah, I blame I blame Serena for that because Serena's supposed to be there for her. She's like. Not there for her. <laughs> no. She is like in her old world. I'm like, do you realize your friend is going through, she's pregnant, about to get married, and you you late to the bachelor party? Isn't she supposed to be planning it? Isn't she made of she honor? She was. She is. Yeah. She was supposed to be planning. And she had planned something like classy shit, but like, yeah. what's her name? is like, nah, man, let's do some wild shit. I ain't been to a, a gossip girl, gossip girl. I ain't been to a bachelorette party in America. I've only seen them on yeah. TV. I want to eat a... A penis cake and shit like yeah, that. That's yeah, what she was yeah. saying. <laughs> That's that was pretty fun. <laughs> she kept yeah, pushing yeah. that too. She was like, "You sure you don't want no penis food?" Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right, we planning this. <laughs> now, what if we she were said, to throw in a little penis food in? She like, she kept the, the priest is like, "The plan is over. There's no penis food. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's not <laughs> worth it. There's no penis food." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, I thought this is America, Jack. <laughs> Every oh, it's no America, Jack. Food. Either get with it or get lost. Uh, that's what she said to Blair. She's the French one. This is America, Jack. Here for Bachelorette, we eat penis food. She's like, okay, okay. We got a lot of we got a lot of ladies uh, who listen to the show. Shout, shout out to the Gossip Royalty. Uh, let us know if you married and if you had uh, penis food at your uh, <laughs> at your Bachelorette party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, be very clear about it. Uh, be very clear yeah. about your penis food. I promise we won't tell anybody. It just it's, this information is purely just for me and Carl. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, for us. Just, uh, <laughs> for us to just understand humanity better. <laughs> it's our own form of therapy. This is that's what yeah. the show is for us. Oh uh, yeah, we ever since Jonah Hill. And men are not allowed to go back to therapy, and so what we do is we ask women <laughs> if they have penis food at their yeah. nice red party. <laughs> That's hilarious. Johnny Hill ruined everything. Johnny Hill ruined therapy for men. Uh, so <laughs> Dan and Serena are out here living a lie. They yeah. acting like they dating for Blair's sake. I don't quite understand this, but 
I'm, I, yeah. I don't feel like wasting brain cells trying to figure it out. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, just, it, it's like just like we just got to find a way to get them back together because that's what's happening. Yeah. And they, but they, uh, they, Serena got uh, Dan spending money he don't want to spend. Exactly. He, he all in. He's like, Brooklyn coffee. coffee is way cheaper in Brooklyn instead of yeah. Madison Avenue. She's like, nah, eight dollar lattes is what it is. If you're gonna be with me and we're gonna be seen <laughs> out here, we gotta we gotta make people know that this shit is real. Uh, yeah. But Dan is the focal part, focal point of her first spectator piece, and yeah. I guarantee you that's about to be some bullshit too. Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, but it seemed like. It's, I, I can't. I don't know if we can tell in this moment, but definitely feels like Serena's feeling him for real, for real. Like oh, she's you liking thought, this, you right? Thought he, like you, you thought she was feeling him. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, she definitely wasn't munching. <laughs> she, she's much. She's the munch in this situation. You thought she yeah, was feeling I feel him? like yeah. Like she, I feel like yeah. She should, like Dan should say you thought I was feeling you. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> you ate munch. Uh, a cafe latte, eight dollar munch. <laughs> so Blair's in a confessional, and she says she want to replace. Uh, she want to replace Cavalia in Monaco. Cavalia yeah. is the is the priest that's the guy in Monaco, and she's like, mm-hmm. I want him out of there. I don't believe in him. He got some up his sleeve. I don't believe it. And she goes, My child, my child. She's like, Do all? I'm I'm thinking like, Do all priests say my child? Or is that just something on TV? Uh, no, man. I, 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 is anyone? Yeah, if you're Catholic, let us know how. I feel like this is kind of offensive to Catholics because the way they going in, the way Blair going in, up in his confession. Talking about some bullshit in there. <laughs> yeah, that's what that, like that brings me to my next question. Do you think yeah. that priests like the tea? Like, do you think that they like? Uh, I think so. I, I mean, I think they'd be like, "Yo, so and so." They just sitting there with all that tea. Like they'd be like, yeah. like they like they know who cheated on people. They know everything. They just sing with everyone's yeah. secrets. Like the I hope they go to murder. therapy. I hope, I hope priests go to therapy because I think that's really important. They hear so much. They hear so much drama all day, every day. I hope yeah. they go to therapy. Uh, that's a lot of yeah. That's a lot to take in. Like people just confessing all the time. Take in. Yeah, I think that's why they rotate though. Why it's always different people in there. So it takes a yeah. bit of break. It's they like, got uh, they got it. They got to go get them an eight dollar Madison Avenue latte. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so she's dreaming about Chuck. That's why she's in there. She's like, I can't stop dreaming about this dude. I can't break my yeah. vow to the Lord. And he's like, just pray about it. Yeah. She's like, okay, great, great, great. Uh, Great advice. Thanks so much. Yeah, this is so uh, stupid. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, just get back with Chuck. Like, I, I don't know. It's a weird, it's such a, it's such a, uh, it's like hanging on a thread, this, whatever yeah. this, whatever this idea is that she's like, I, I got to protect Chuck. Or he's going to die if I get back with him. It's like, yeah. I, I can't watch this. <laughs> like, I was like, it's, it's, that's not going to happen. <laughs> like, so she like, leaves, oh, she mm-hmm. leaves and the priest is... The guy that was smashing Beatrice in the back of the car, like last season. Yeah, that was a so, little humdinger, though. I did not see that coming. But, it was I mean, a bit of a humdinger. humdinger. It, yeah, it wasn't a full humdinger, in my opinion. It was a. It was. It, it was, was just, like. It was. It was. It hummed it was just a little like, bit. Okay, what's gonna? Yeah, it was dinging. It was dinging. It was ding donging. But it was just like enough for me to be like, "What's about to happen? Like, yeah. what's, what's this about to be? What's she about to do? What are you about to do with this information?" But uh, yeah. yeah, so it's all right. It was an alright humdinger. It was a little, it was soft. A little soft it was a little soft. It was, it was, it was a soft. It was a soft dinger. You know, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't fully. I, I wasn't feeling it. It thought yeah. I was feeling it, but I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. I'm, I'm not munching on that. I'm not a, munching. It on was that. A ice spice. It was a little spice. Just a it little was a little spicy. spicy. Uh, yeah. But and their whole storyline was stupid to me too. Like. That yeah, okay, this is my issue with it. It's like these this their storylines driving this episode, but it's like I don't, we don't care about them. Like cuz they have exactly. set up their their relationship cuz I'm like I didn't even realize they were that in love like that or like Me neither. They made it seem like if she was like you got to leave the fucking cloth for me. <laughs> like, yeah, you got to you, like, you don't want the, <laughs> the problem <laughs> is you don't want to leave the cloth for me and I'm like, "Bro, why does she have to what? Like yeah, that's his job. Like, but he also is corrupt, so I don't know why he just don't leave. There's no way he's making enough yeah. money to just stay there. Like, I'm just yeah. gonna keep being a priest because he clearly is is not a good priest, or you yeah. know, like a, he's not a he's not a man, a trustworthy man. Yeah. So, so he he ain't. It's like I don't know why his vow. If he's that, I think I think what it really is, he don't want to be with her. Really, he was just using her probably to stay in the I fam. Can, you know what I mean? I can he, believe you know, that. He, yeah, he's probably like, you know, I love you, girl, but really, he's like, he's like, nah, I don't like you like that. I'm just, 
I'm just fucking. I was just fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> the way this resolve was crazy too. We'll we'll get to it. So, yeah. uh, Nate gets a pick of Max holding the money from that night. So now yeah. he done finally figured out the Max part of it, but it still and don't that was, tell. Was that from Gossip Girl? That pick? Who sent yeah. that pick? That okay. was the evidence that Gossip Girl sent. That Got was the it, evidence man. that Gossip Girl sent, and so that was you know that was uh. It, it, kind of a piece, but Nate still yeah. wasn't like, nah, but I still can't figure out why Max would be holding the money. So Yeah, he, or like, like why would they don't, gonna hurt me? Like I didn't Exactly. Think, he, he there's no reason to figure out who would want to hurt me, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And that's a real question too. I was definitely being like, Who would want to hurt this guy? Yeah. But I would I would also be like, I ain't done nothing to nobody. I ain't she was like, I'm going through all of all of the spectators' posts, like I ain't yeah. said really nothing. Like yeah. I ain't really out here on no on no crazy like, gossip. So I don't know why that I'm... would be weird. Like if if you someone trying to kill you, would you be like, would you know who it was, or would you be confused? Like who would try to kill I would, me? <laughs> I would be extremely confused if somebody tried to kill me. Yeah, I'd be like, <laughs> like why what would have I done? <laughs> what have I done so bad that you're trying to kill me? As opposed to just like like just try to cancel me or something. If I like <laughs> I haven't done anything murder worthy. Yeah, like murder like. It takes a lot to murder someone, like to wipe somebody off the planet. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I, I understand what Nate's going through because he's he's probably like legit, like man, why would what the fuck is going on? This is crazy. And Max, yeah. Max is in the picture. Fuck yeah, Max. It's like, why is he here? <laughs> yeah. So I, he probably confuses shit. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So uh, the priest uh, is like he he tells Beatrice that Blair's still in love with Chuck, which she already knew. And so they right. try. They're trying to devise a plan to to you know figure out how to get Blair to say that out loud. Yeah, and like we so, don't get her drunk at the at your bachelorette party or whatever. Yeah, like yeah. it's like get her drunk and we'll get Chuck there and then she's gonna confess her all her love, her yeah. undying love. And then My Louis gonna be up in there too. So yeah. wait, so here's the, okay. So we get to Serena and her column is about to launch with her face mm-hmm. on it. On the cab. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That shit was funny. And that shit was so funny. And she stood in front of the cab, and she held the iPad up, and that shit said, Paige doesn't exist. Yeah. And <laughs> Even the camera guy was like, ain't nothing on there, shawty. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, ain't nothing on there, Kim Fo. And she was, like, <laughs> she was like, let me try to refresh it. She was embarrassed as hell. I love seeing yeah. Serena embarrassed. That's some of my yeah, favorite parts of this great. show whenever she's embarrassed. But I know she's about to do great. something crazy when she gets embarrassed, too. So that's, that, that's annoying. Yeah. Uh, I will say that cab... Ad was pretty dope though. Like I was like, oh, that's pretty nice. That's pretty, I would yeah. want to check out that blog. S on <laughs> I, S. I, I, I'll check out that blog. I'll check out S on S. Yeah. I'll check out S on S for sure. So the reason why I didn't show up was because Nate deleted it because Gossip Girl asked him to. Right. So Gossip and, Girl is trying to get. She's trying to make a comeback. That's yeah, why I'm, yeah, not really, like, I'm not tripping over Gossip Girl because she's basically like, y'all put me out. I can help you. You help me. Like let me get back in the game. You know what I'm saying? Like totally. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Feel that. So yeah, she's doing she she's doing what she needs to do to kind of, you know, get back into everybody's good graces. And I think this this relationship between her and Nate is mm-hmm. a fruitful one for both of them, because yeah. Nate needs to find out who tried to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> like he's he has like every like when uh, this would made me mad. Are we at the scene where Serena came in tripping on his cat? Well, not yeah. So okay, she yeah. just walked in tripping, and he's yeah. like, "It's a marketing play. I promise you, I'll let you know when it's time." But right now. The market yeah. is not good. Nobody was clicking on it. Um, I'm sorry, but this is just how it's got to be right now. And she's like, "All right, right I can, I can take that. That that's fine to me. Uh, yeah. That's cool." And so Dan asked Serena to not publish their relationship in the article, and she's like, "Well, right. it's not coming out anyway because Nate killed it. But why you don't want to be seen with me? Why you like?" She got embarrassed yeah, yeah, yeah. by that. I'm like, so oh, Serena, I'm like, come on, Serena, girl. Don't and do he's this like, right Look, now. You fucking with my book. You fucking with my image because he got all these ideas and shit." Yeah, he don't want to. He wanted. He's getting typecast or type write it. What it calls when yeah. a writer gets typecasted, like types type written, type type. Yeah, he getting type type. <laughs> <laughs> I'm type type, but he want to write some books about the future, about the past. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is funny. He's like, man, I got yeah. this story. It takes place in New York, a hundred years from now. They're like, man, yeah. get that bullshit out of here. <laughs> they was cracking me up. Oh man, they were like, man, put that book on these nuts. The yeah, both, the both, exactly. both of those dudes was just roasting him. He's like, all right, all right. Uh, well, I hope you got something a little more modern. But yeah, they ain't keep nobody, that Serena, too. She tight. Ain't nobody <laughs> trying to read that bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> we want to hear I'm about spin, the new shit. I'm still shit. tripping on why Agent Bay hasn't, uh, why they haven't smashed yet. I don't know. 
I feel like it's, I, what I thought was going to happen was, because remember how she was like, I got advice. I don't want to tell you because I don't want to, you know, sort your game. And he was like, tell me. And she was like, oh, I think you should, I think you shouldn't be dating Serena. So when she said that, I thought maybe she was going to try to make a play for him. Like, she's like, I, you should be dating she, someone like me, like a smart person. Like I get that. I yeah, think she really cares. I, I think she really cares about his career. I think yeah, she's like, maybe nah, she man. just genuinely wants to help him. <laughs> and I, I see think she, she's a good person. Yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> I, I think she really cares about his career. And I think that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty nice of her. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, a good agent. So, so all you agents out there, y'all can watch this and take some notes. Take some notes. How to, how to, how to treat your clients. You know what I'm <laughs> I love my agents. They're very nice. Uh, yeah, but me too. please, I please, <laughs> agents, get into get into my personal business and tell me who I should and shouldn't be dating. I that's what I that's what I pay you ten percent of every job for is for you to be like, hey, stop messing with this girl. So Chuck is following Blair. She catches him while they yeah. stand in line at the at the macaroon place, and he's like, you gotta talk to me. And yeah. she's like, no, I'm not telling you nothing. And then that's when she goes up to Beatrice and is like, all right, fine, penis cake. Like we can yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, let's get it in because I need to, I like, need to let some steam. I need some penis cake right now. I need some penis <laughs> cake right now. Uh, so Serena see Nate been communicating with Gossip Girl because she like barges in the office. So this is my mm-hmm. new favorite character is Nate's new assistant. Oh yeah, and, uh, I, 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 I feel you on her. Last time I was hating on her because the way she left Nate in the in the middle of that, of that scene. But this this one I'm like she really be looking out for him. So like she's like yo yo hold up hold up home girl what you doing yeah. in the office like you better get you your ass in there. She's like Nate ain't gonna mind if I'm in here. I could be in here on this computer. And she's like yeah. get out. Like I wish she would have like. Started fighting Serena in that moment. Yeah, I kind of felt like it was like close, like she was like about to smack her up a little bit. Like maybe that would have been tight. Like like she had a little uh, shiv, just started poking her. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> stop, 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 That would have been sick if she had a, like. But she, I like her. She's my new favorite character. I hope she don't turn bad because right now she good. Right now she kind of yeah. keeping the she kind of keeping it going with yeah. with Nate and them. I, I I don't want her to go bad. I yeah, make no, the she, good girls go bad. bad. But yeah. Uh, but this is when Serena C-A sees now. the email. Serena sees right. the email at this point. She sees the email right. from Gossip Girl. I've been like, oh, this is why you kill my column. Right. Because right. you've been talking to Gossip Girls. And, and you working with Gossip Girl. I don't understand this. But because and, and, he, <laughs> he. And so she goes in there and she launches her own column. That, that was crazy. Like, that's definitely like. I mean, I understand why she's mad, but also like. Like, uh, he can't just do that shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to just post this shit anyway. <laughs> I'm going to just post this shit anyway. Uploading to the spectator. That yeah. shit. Every time I see that, that shit makes me. It, I know, it's like, hilarious. It drives it's me like, crazy. What, what operating system are they using? <laughs> exactly. Like, no, Uploading like, to the spectator. Uh, but also, like, Luke. I call this nigga Luke. But uh, Nate, <laughs> Nate is like, I'm like. I mean, he has every right to do what he's doing. First of all, it's his shit. It's his company. And secondly, he's like. I'm trying to find out who killed me. I don't give a fuck about your fucking blog. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Fuck, like, fuck your blog. Like, <laughs> like she about to tell me who kind of killed me. <laughs> yeah. That so is funny to me. Well, this is we already talked about the the meeting that Dan had, and this was after the blog yeah. came out, so it kind of messed him up. But mm-hmm. uh, Nate fires Serena as soon as she walk in. She's like, "Hey, yeah. Nate," and he goes, "Oh, hey, you fired." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he fired. Oh, hey, cool with the, you're fired. That's how you fire people when your back turned to them. Like, yeah. He he ain't even look back. He was just like, "You fired." Right. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. keep, I'm gonna keep typing when I'm typing. Yeah. <laughs> that shit was great. Uh, but then mm-hmm. they got to a fight, and Assistant Babe posted it on Gossip Girl. Yeah, and but it was like shown right then that Nate knew that she was yeah. doing that. Right, right. So because she had to be publicly Bay is holding it down. You're right. Like Assistant Babe got Nate's back. I like her. Too. She got his I'm, back. I'm I, her. Yeah. I hope she don't go dirty. I hope she don't go dirty, but she probably will. I mean, she had, she's too new. We got. I think she's got to like. To find it. We we got to get her in the cl- crew. Once she yeah. starts hanging with the crew, then then she gonna turn dirty because that's what happens when everyone that's starts what hanging with everybody. That's they what happens toxic. with everybody. They get yeah. toxic. Uh, so Beatrice got Blair bachelorette party at Panchitos. It's a quirky quirky restaurant doling out Mexican staples and margaritas in big casual digs with outdoor seating. Uh, McDougal Street apparently is right next to the Comedy Cellar. So we know oh, that shit, is. Oh shit! Right over there. Oh yeah, let's pull up. Panchitos. I'm, I'm so we'll, thinking I'm about we'll, to go to New York. No, we're going to New Orleans. That's not. Yeah, <laughs> ain't, ain't got no panchitos down here. <laughs> I I ain't go front. When they went there, I was like, nigga, that shit look lit. I was like, I was like, let's kick it. Let's go there. Let's she was like, I never see so many bridge and tunnel people. 
Uh, yeah. That's a term that I learned recently, bridge and tunnel. That's like a diss that New York people, especially Upper East Siders and like rich people in New yeah. York, call people who are from like Jersey or from the other boroughs. They call them bridge and tunnel. Yeah, I met yeah. the. I met some. I like them though. I like the. They was cool when I. Remember we met them. We were going. We went to SNL. We went to Who? go see the Eddie Murphy show. We were hanging with. Luke. Or maybe you weren't there, but it was like Lucas. It was like I think it was me, you, and Lucas, and we met some bridge and tunnel people, and they were. Like oh yeah, from Jersey. Yeah. When we were at the and, bar, we were at Elgin's. Yeah, that bar, yeah. yeah. And they were like, yeah, we're Bridge and Tuttle, motherfucker. Like, and they were cool. We were getting us drinks and stuff. We were having a good time. I yeah. fuck with them. I'm down. Hell I'm yeah. Listen, XOXO Gospel Kings stands with the Bridge and Tunnel people. Yeah. I'm we stand. Of, we we make this We make this podcast for y'all. We're sick of these rich, fucking elitist. Like, yeah, just mar- marginalizing. Yeah. We are the real people, okay? We are the real people, the Bridge and Tunnel people. I lied. Oh, I get it's it. It's because they road. gotta cross the bridge and go through the tunnel to get there. Mm-hmm. You know what's uh, funny? The whole time I thought before I actually knew what that was, I always thought that when someone said they're bridge and tunnel, that they're rich. Like it was, I thought when they would say like, "Oh, that's the bridge and tunnel," that means like they're the rich people who come to town. But no, now no, no. I'm like, "Oh, it's the people who don't live, who aren't rich enough to live in the city." In New York, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that is. Uh, Blair's acting in this episode was amazing. I thought she was so funny. As a she drunk. did do a she good job. Like, she, she was like, "This game, is, like she was, like, she's like, this game is kicking my ass." Yeah, <laughs> she's, she's like, like, "How y'all know these answers?" Because <laughs> uh, Beatrice so being funny. fucking sneaky, she texting the girls the answers and shit of the game, yeah. and they biting it too. That shit was nuts. They just making Blair get drunk as hell. Uh, I know, at least get drunk with her, like. I mean, it's like, don't just get hit. Because it's not like they yeah. need her to be drunk, too. I feel like they were, like, just watching her drink. I was like, all right, y'all can drink with her. Yeah. But uh, it, she was crazy. But yeah, you see that, Rufus. That was, Rufus was loving Serena's article. He was oh, over yeah, there cracking yeah. up. <laughs> he, was chug, he was getting his yucks out. <laughs> he was like, well, well, this is good, man. <laughs> yeah. Rufus over there said, like, oh, no, she didn't. No, she didn't. You know, <laughs> oh, shit. That reminds me. Dan, you got that, to uh, read this. <laughs> the scene in uh, Menace to Society when, when the dude was watching the fight and right after Stacy got his ass beat by Kane and he was he was laughing at the TV. He's like, man, this dude beating his ass. He, he's yeah. like, he beating his ass just like Kane beat your ass the other day. Oh, that, we're going to see about <laughs> Kane. That's, that's what that scene felt like to me. I wonder if the director was using that as a reference. <laughs> that was it. He was like, so I saw this scene in Menace to Society where Clif- <laughs> Clifton Powell got his ass whooped by Kane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then Rufus is like, Clifton who? What? Um, <laughs> what do you want me to do, sir? He's like, just laugh at the blog. But yeah, Rufus was cracking me up. That was great. There was some funny so, moments in this episode. It was. It was some good moments. But uh, we got to talk about, so Serena couldn't come to the bachelorette party because she was finna set up trip. So yeah. she was finna get trip. She was like, she was like, I'm finna, I'm finna make sure trip knows that Nate is doing some crazy shit over here. Right. Like, yeah. So she was, she was finna get trip to the house because, because mm-hmm. Nate was going nuts. And you know, right, Trip, right. Trip loved himself from Serena. Yeah, I'm so, surprised he still. Uh, but yeah, he was. He was like, "I'm so glad you believe me." In this moment, yeah. did you believe him? Or you, or you I did. Knew? I did because Serena's really? dumb like that. This was it. This got me because I'm like, yeah. Serena's so Serena just. It made me so mad, like when she like went off on him. Like, why would you think Trip would do that to you? I'm like, yeah. Trip left your ass bleeding in a car. What are you right. talking about? Yeah, that that was kind of like I was like, how could she be so against Nate? But then, then but we know why. We know why. We, all we know, know why. We all know why. So we find it. It was a setup. It was a setup the whole time. Yeah. Paw Paw and Nate pull up on you. In the back, yeah, humdinger that Shelly. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, I, that was tight. I was like, they was in the back. I love, I love a sliding door when the door slides open. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. What up, motherfucker? We heard that whole shit. It's like he, a, tried to blame, uh, he tried to blame it on Marie. Like a Japanese apartment. And like, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Like slide it back. <laughs> yeah. Not so fast. Yeah, not so fast. Trip. 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 <laughs> yeah, tripping. trip. You tripping. You tripping, and then, trip. Yeah, and then, and then Serena brought that shit up. She's like, why would I fucking believe your ass? You left me in the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so was, Chuck pulls like, up oh, to the bar. Fuck. What'd you say? Mm-hmm. I would just say Trip was like, I just imagine him being like, fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was like, was damn, like, I did do that. Up. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, that's crazy. It, it felt like he was like wanted to be like, damn, I ain't shit. <laughs> I, like, I really, I, I really do be out here tripping. I really do be tripping. So Chuck pulls up to the bar with the priest. Blair walk out drunk as hell, and the girl puts a joint in her mouth as soon as the cops is walking up. And it's the old trope of like, ooh, the strippers are here, but they're real cops. Yeah, and she gets, oh yeah, <laughs> she gets arrested for having a joint in her mouth. And I'm always she happy tried. to see that. I love that. I love that trope. 
that trope doesn't bother me. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's a classic. It's, it's a classic trope. Yeah. The 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 women strip the, the women bachelorette party where the cop walks in. Either he's a real he's a he's a, a real stripper and the girl gets like scared. But if she's yeah. drunk, and usually it'll happen like where the first guy is a is a real stripper and he's like time to get down ladies time yeah. to get down and then and and and, and like hey, do uh, that, do that again. <laughs> time to get down ladies time to get down time to get down. I'm having trouble on my on my side. You have to do it one more time because that it's it's cut right. coming through. Time to get down, ladies. Time to get down. Time yeah, to get it's down. always one. It's always one guy, and then the other guy is like a real ass cop. Yeah, it's like, like what's going on here, ladies? And they're like, ooh, another one. And then they always try yeah. like, is that your real gun? And, yeah, and they try to reach for it. He's like, don't touch yeah. my gun, like, Freeze. And then they get arrested. You're under arrest. So this happened yeah. to Blair. She gets uh, she gets arrested. Chuck can't save her. And then Dan goes, oh, of course you'd be behind this. Now, this yeah. made me upset. This made mm. me mad. Yeah. Because him saying, of course you'd be behind this, Chuck didn't defend himself. And was like, I wasn't behind this. Like, why would I be behind yeah. this? Right, right. Yeah, I didn't understand. I was, like, confused as hell. This whole scene was a little messy, honestly. But, yeah, I think, uh, Dan, I think Chuck, because he was homeboy... Priest boy went in there. To, I, I think the plan was just going crazy. I don't know. It was, yeah, that scene was not written well. I don't think she. I don't. I don't think Beatrice even knew that she stepped outside. Yeah, like it, it, the whole thing got a, the plan just fell apart. I guess because she just pulled. She just went outside on her own. And it's, <laughs> time to get down, ladies. Time, time to, to get, get down, down, ladies. Time to get down. If, you, if I like, yeah, I feel like if I was a stripper, I would have to change my voice. Like I can't talk like the way I talk now. Like I have to be like. You. Time to get down, ladies. Time to get down. Time hey, to get down. excuse me, ladies. Get down. I've heard a. I've heard a. I've, we got a noise complaint down at the precinct. Looks like it's time to get down. Time to get down, ladies. It's, it's like it's like they're always like washing their chest. Like, yeah. It's like I need to like I need to clean my chest off. Like, clean my chest off. Time to get down, ladies. Time to get down, ladies. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> What, a, what so, a weird life to live. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> so Trip tells his side of the story, and and yeah. Max uh, Max didn't do it. Max yeah. played him. Max took his money. He was like Max Max ain't no killer out here. He's like, I ain't gonna cut nobody like, break lines, bro. So yeah, Max, I'm a thief. Come uh, dinger that because this yeah. whole time I definitely thought Max did that. So I thought Max did it too. And ran. Okay. Remember, right. I I said yeah. it. I was like, if my Mac and my boy Max don't went bad on him. Where he cutting break lines, like that's gonna that's gonna make me upset. So I was very happy yeah. that Max can remain my favorite character in the show, along with Miss Carr, Rufus, Eric, and, and, and Nate's <laughs> new assistant. Like Max is in there. These are my favorite characters on the show. All, all the most least inter- interesting characters. In the show. <laughs> they interesting to me. I love them all. They interesting to me. <laughs> uh, yeah. So because I it was like, damn, Max, like to go from like where he was to. Go from just like wanting to open up a restaurant to like cutting the brakes off yeah. of a person he has, who doesn't know. It seems like a crazy like st- arc for him. But um, if if I so had yeah, wrote this just, scene, I would have cut to Max in Portland in that exact yeah. moment as a male yeah. stripper, being like, "Time to get down, ladies. Get down, ladies. Time to get Time down." To get down. <laughs> <laughs> like, he all, he all old up. Like it's yeah. the scene would start out like he's in the kitchen, like he's like a chef. He's like, "So we're do is gonna put this cooking oil." And then it's time to get down. Get ladies. down, ladies. Time to get time down. To get down. <laughs> <laughs> like I thought he was a chef. I thought he was a chef the whole time. I thought he was uh, a chef. But- <laughs> I was wondering why a chef came to our hotel room. <laughs> oh man! Uh, but so so did the trip just do it himself then? Yeah, he what? did it. He did it himself. He I went up in there and cut crazy. the break line himself. He was like, I wasn't trying to kill you. I was just trying to ruin your weekend. <laughs> That was crazy. He's like, bro, you can't. He said, I thought you was going to, you know, I thought you was going to hit a tree or something. I thought you, you know, I thought you was going to like rear, rear end a park like, car or something. That's like Tory Lane's logic. He's like, yeah. I was trying to kill her. I was just, I was, trying, I was, I was just shooting. I was just saying dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just shooting around her. <laughs> like, what? Why are you playing with my life like that? <laughs> yeah, that was crazy so, to want to kill his own cousin like that. And then that I know. made me laugh when the pop pop was like, that, that's your excuse? You ain't you wasn't loved enough. <laughs> He's like, man, man up, man up. <laughs> we ain't being a little hoe. <laughs> I don't love you. I don't love none of y'all. <laughs> so crazy. they going down to the precinct. Dan breaks mm-hmm. up with Serena. The hypothetical yeah. breakup. That was that was. I'm glad he did that. 
And Beatrice yeah, turns out good. good. Beatrice, oh, Beatrice turns out good. Yeah, that was great. I thought I, I'm liking that. I mean, I don't. What I don't like is does that mean her and Louie are really gonna get married? Because man, she can't marry this cat. I don't, I don't think know. so. I I don't know. Well, we learned some more stuff right here too. So mm-hmm. Dan tells Serena that her column was good, and Chuck pulls up. Yeah. Uh, Serena's like, get out of here, Chuck. He's like, I'll leave, but I ain't stopping. I'm finna figure this yeah. out, this shit out. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, and he has every right to, every right to feel that way. Yeah. <laughs> now here's where we get it's a little good. bit of a of a, a humdinger right here. So Blair is hungover, mm-hmm. and yeah. Serena comes in with with some coffee, and she sees Louis' vows on the bed. She goes, What are those? Right. Those are Louis' vows. Yeah. And Serena gets jealous. She's like, he poured yeah. out his soul. It was beautiful. He poured out his soul in these vows. Yeah, yeah And absolutely. Serena's like, I'm jealous. You okay if I get a little jealous? And she goes, I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, yeah. And, that's and, our uh, dynamic. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're a toxic bitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and like, you know, what's funny is like, well, also she was like being bad. I guess she just took them. I don't know where she got them, but she was like, because you're not supposed to read them shits, I guess. Yeah, no. She said and, she found them in a drawer. Oh, uh, okay. But what she said that was interesting which made Gavin the Hundinger later. She was like, you know, this whole time, I, the thing, the reason I didn't want to get with Louis is because I just feel like he don't know me or don't see me. Yeah. And wh- when he wrote this, it made me feel like he really knows me. Uh, he really do see me. Now, and and like, okay. here's what we learned. Yeah. Yeah. So Ser- Serena. Crazy. Oh, yeah. So the priest is sending Beatrice. We're done with Beatrice here. She's going to Africa. Yeah. She's going to East Africa <laughs> to be a... To be a yeah, so Beatrice's storyline is, is over. I, Everybody I would always have gets, loved to see... I hope the next episode opens up with her in Africa. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> goddamn flies. Like, yeah. 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 It's like, gossip girl, like, looks like somebody's in Africa. Uh, yeah. anyway, but, uh, uh, but yeah, they, so they break up, basically, because he he's like, I, ain't, I don't give a fuck. He's yeah, like, you ain't gonna like, do shit to me. Who your mama gonna yeah. believe, me, a priest, or you, her daughter? And she's like, ah, yeah. and she walks with she goes, that should be your mother right there, bon voyage. Yeah, she's crazy. And, <laughs> so, then, and so now he's he working with Chuck now, uh, yeah. homeboy. It's crazy. All right, now here's, here's some other crazy shit. This is where we learn something else crazy about this thing. So, basically, what we learn right now is Serena, jealous being jealous that she is, she mm-hmm. calls Dan, and Dan's like, what's up? I'm busy right now. I'm, I'm in a groove, right? And she's like, we won't get lunch? He's like, I'm in a groove. I'm writing right now. What you want? Like, yeah. what do you? He's like, well, we should we should keep this charade going on for a little bit longer. But Blair had right. just told her we don't have to do that. Right. So she's she said, you just, don't have to do it no more. Yeah. She's wanna, She really is trying to get back with Dan, but it's because she's jealous of what Blair is going through, and she wants a love of her own. Yeah. Not because a she likes Dan. It's because your own. I I want a real love, and that was another classic Serena selfish move. Selfish move because Dan don't Some want bullshit. that. Dan yeah, trying to Dan. Dan trying to get his life together. He don't want her right now. He's not dealing with that. It, and so she's gonna ruin his life. He's kind of in shambles right now. Like he really yeah. gotta focus. He, he needs to focus up. But while he's on the phone with her, he gets mm-hmm. a delivery from a courier, and the courier yeah. comes in and gives him a book, and the book is some some type of book, some French yeah. shit. And there's a note in it that says, "Thank you for writing my vows, Louis." Whoa, humdinger. <laughs> It's time, down, down, it's time to get down, ladies. It's time to get down. Time to get down, ladies. It's time to get down, ladies. It's time to get down. That's a humdinger right there. That's when uh, the courier. Everybody, the courier comes in, and he's like, "Oh, thanks. I uh, thanks for the letter." And he's like, "Do right, you need anything else?" And he's like, "Just one more thing. Time to get. It's down, time to get down, ladies. Time to get it's down, time to get Dan. down. Time to get down. It's, Dan. T- it's time to get down, Dan. <laughs> it's time to get Dan. It's time to get Dan, ladies. It's time to get Dan." That'd uh, be a funny sketch, like just like. Every like someone's life is just like every time they interact with some type of ser- person in service. Yeah, it's a, tra- it's a master <laughs> uh, uh, But yeah, so that was a humdinger because that I don't know what's gonna happen. I really don't remember. But if Blair find out, I hope that gives Dan a shot. I hope. Yeah, I hope he. Because that's what I, like. That's what I want him with. I want him with Blair. Yeah, but uh, especially so then, just to hurt Serena too. I just just so Serena can be salty about it. That's and what then, I love. Of course, we know Chuck and the priest are going to stop the wedding now, or try to stop the wedding. Yeah, and I think yeah. it's going to work. I think it's going to work. It has. He has to. I, it sucks because I'm not. I don't fuck with the priest, but I kind of, I kind of on Chuck's side in this one. I don't. Yeah. I just don't want to see someone marry the wrong person. Like clearly, she's in love with Chuck. Because it, it, this is good for Louis too. Like Louis should not marry this girl. <laughs> she's no. not. You don't love him. She's like, not right for him. 
She's not yes. right for him. She's not ready to be royalty. And he, yeah. She need to be with Chuck. But what, what do you give this episode? Where, Wait, what do you say? Uh, in the scene where Chuck decides, he, like when they shake each other's hand, like in yeah. the, in the uh, church, and he's like, he's like, look, I'm a villain. I thought it was really deep how he was like, he's like, you know, Blair already thinks I'm a villain, so I might as well be a villain. And he like shakes his hand, and then the priest is like, time to get down, ladies. Time to get down. <laughs> 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 he starts taking his clothes off. It's crazy. I feel like you can, it's like crazy. All the, all these people who wear uniforms are just meant to take them off. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, like, but um, time to get down, I, ladies. I would rate this honestly. I this episode was all over the place to me. Like in terms of this, like it was a lot of good moments, but as a whole, I just was not ha- enjoying it that much. So I'm gonna give it a two point nine 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 nine. So not two point nine. A little a little below average, but not like awful. You know. All right, so um, that's XOXO. 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 Ladies. Okay. What do you think? I'm going to give it a I'm going to give it a 2.78. I didn't really like it a ton. I'm happy yeah. that Beatrice is out of there though. Yeah, I'm glad she's back. I wish I'm glad she's back in the mother country. You know, yeah, and, mother and, Russia. And, uh, where it all started, you know what I'm saying? The original man, the Asiatic man. She's down there. <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> Uh, what did you say? Two point seven eight. Two point seven eight. So that's okay. XOXO. 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 Swish. All right, man. That's all right. We're rolling. We're rolling. You got some news for me? This is crazy. Right now, we ain't got no speaker at the house. You know about this? Oh yeah, because about Kevin McCarthy is out. Yeah, they got rid of him. So if uh, let me tell you something. Let me show you this. If Somebody killed our president and killed Kamala Harris. They're supposed to be the uh, speaker of the house. So you know who would be this? Who would be the president after that? <laughs> the president pro temper of the Senate. Would the president, be our president pro temp. <laughs> yeah, the pro temp. Uh, and his name's pro Pat, Pat Murray. But uh, Pat Murray. So that we can't have that happen. So we need somebody from our cast to take over the house. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give it the trip. Trip, <laughs> he's a murderer. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, they all got blood on their hands down there. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Hey, I'm gonna um, give it the trip. All right, I'm gonna give it to. Um, I give it to Beatrice. You know, since she's out there <laughs> doing work. You might as well give it to Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> um, so, check this out. You know, Girl Scouts, the cookies. Yeah. So they they gotten rid of one of their most popular flavors called Raspberry Rally. You know about that one, Raspberry no. Rally. I, I thought I was I was a little confused too because I was like my favorite flavor is Samoa hands down. Like I don't even know what we're talking about. But I was like wondering maybe Carl might know if he, if this is a good flavor. I've never even heard of that flavor. I've never heard. Also, of Also, I should preface this where I found this story on Fox News. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe it's, maybe it's specific to that audience. But. Uh, I don't know. Maybe one. It made me wonder who on our show would sell the most uh, Girl Scout cookies if we had to put them against each other. Uh, so. I'm thinking that I'm thinking the most Girl Scout cookies would be sold by Blair for sure. Yeah, she got the minions helping her and shit. She probably have yeah. a whole army out there getting it in. And then yeah. um, I bet I bet Ivy can sell some shit too. Or, or Charlie. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, she's a she's a she's a crook. She could sell some. Yeah, she 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 good at the improv and all that. All right, that's the news, baby. I ain't going. I ain't gonna hold you. I ain't gonna hold you. It's hot in my house. I gotta get out of here. Uh, it's t- it's time to get I'm out. It's I'm time gonna be to get out, out there in New Orleans. If you see me and Carl in these streets and you fan of the app, you hit. You come say hi. You say come what's say up. what up. All right. Also, this episode will be coming out by the time we get back to Los Angeles. So, oh yeah. <laughs> so if you see us in LA, come be Chuck like I miss you in, in New Orleans. Say yeah. I, I, I miss you guys in New Orleans, but whatever. it's time to get down, ladies. It's time to get down. Time to get down. It's time to get down. I'm gonna stand Tell up. us your favorite. Send us your favorite uh, stripper stories to male strippers. Time to get, time down, to get down, ladies. It's time to, time get, to down. get down. It's time to get, get down. down. <laughs> it's time to get down, ladies. All right, follow us on XOXO Gossip Kings underscore podcast. Bye. That was a headgum podcast.